and uh, <clears throat> today I'd like to just uh, share a little bit of an insight uh, with you uh, from the book of James. So if you've got your Bibles, uh, um, you can turn to the book of James for me. And um, <clears throat> and uh, now the book of James is a very interesting one. I, I always think uh, when I'm really sort of uh, demotivated or, or a bit low or even slightly depressed, um, <laughs> the book of James is probably the one that I that I sort of stand away a little bit <laughs> from reading, um, uh, although it's actually very good tonic for the soul. Uh, and the reason is um, uh, uh, James is a little bit like a dentist, and you you think, well, <laughs> why would I be saying that? Uh, but uh, let me come to that a little bit later. So I'll keep you in suspense on that one. Um, but uh, today I want to bring a, a little bit of insight of um, uh, about our troubles and trials and uh, the insight of uh, why we sort of dragged down in it, why we seem to have the wrong responses to our troubles and trials. So today I'm going to share with you, but before I do, let's just take a, a moment just to reflect and uh, attune our minds to, to God. So let's just uh, bow our heads in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Almighty Father, we, we just come uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, um, and we just uh, come to this moment, Lord, where we just uh, want to quiet our minds, Lord, quiet our hearts to, to hear you, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, your word is, is our guide, is our lamp for our feet, Lord. Uh, and Lord, as, uh, as have I prepared uh, this word, Lord, let it not me, be me speaking, but your Holy Spirit, Lord, uh, let me just be an instrument, Lord, uh, for you as I, uh, as I share these words. But above all, Lord, I pray go ahead of this word, Lord, uh, and prepare the hearts, uh, that needs to receive whatever you need to say today, Lord. Uh, and Lord, we know that your word doesn't go um, go out uh, without bringing a, a reward, a harvest back for the effort that was made. So Lord, uh, uh, I just uh, commit this time uh, to you now, Lord, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. So now if you're uh, in the book of James, uh, let's go to the first chapter. Um, and uh, although James is a very, very short uh, uh, book uh, in the New Testament, um, I'm not going to ask you to read the whole one. I'm actually going to just start off by reading one verse, and that's in uh, James uh, 1, uh, and that's verse 2. And, um, and that's, uh, I'll read from the New International Version, which is, <clears throat> Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Now, you might question here, it's a consider it pure joy uh, to, to face trials for many kinds. So you may consider, is there a way to handle trials with joy? Um, uh, it, certainly trials and troubles bring sort of a, a, a sense of real despair or gloominess or anger or disillusionment within us. Uh, it's a very counterintuitive thing, uh, James is sort of reflecting right here at the outset of James. Uh, the book of James is uh, reflecting that. And uh, <clears throat> it feels really counterintuitive for us. Um, but James really implies here that for the mature Christian, he sees something in the trial that the immature Christian might not be seeing. It's about a perspective. Now, it's hard to control our feelings. Um, uh, this feeling that I've sort of touched on, this feelings of anger or, or depression or, or even bitterness in times of trials and troubles or a resentfulness to, to almost our situation and people around us. Uh, <clears throat> It's very hard to feel joyful, uh, to, to feel in that situation uh, th th that you want to be happy and joyful. <clears throat> um, and God knows that. God knows that we can't uh, just switch our feelings on and off. Uh, we may think we do. And, and I must say, from a, a culture coming to from a different culture into the British culture many years ago, uh, it was always warned that the, the British uh, have a, a stiff upper lip. They, they control their emotions very well. Uh, and yes, and then by and large, that is the experience. Uh, but the experience was also uh, that uh, no matter who we are and which culture we are and where we live in the world, we are emotional beings uh, and feelings play a very important role uh, and also a very big role in driving uh, our, the way we act and do things. So <clears throat> we can't just switch our feelings off. It sometimes just overwhelms us, especially at times of difficulty. That is when the emotions really, our feelings really come to the fore and drive us. Now, interestingly, what James is saying here is not, um, he doesn't say, uh, uh, feel joyful. He says, consider joyful. 
Uh, and so that's a very interesting word. So I, I thought, what does that actually mean? So consider, um, if I am consider something, I'm thinking about it, aren't I? I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling something, I'm considering, I'm thinking. My thoughts are at work. So this is about a thought process in response to those very trials he's referring to. <clears throat> so although it's very hard to control our feelings, um, uh, it's not so hard to control our thoughts. Um, we can actually learn to consider something. We can, can learn to consider uh, uh, to be joyful in our trials. And that's what really James is, uh, is aiming here or focusing on here or trying to convey here. <clears throat> now, we are a new creation um, and God says we'll be renew uh, we need to and will be renewing our minds. So we have to take charge of our minds. And that's what uh, James is referring to here as part of the journey of maturity and sanctification is that uh, changing of our thoughts uh, rather than uh, relying on those senses of uh, emotion and feeling um, at times of trouble. Uh, and James wants us to think about it rather than feel it. And he wants us to consider, and we'll come on to this a little bit later on, is consider it in the way God frames our trials and troubles. Uh, uh, seeing it from his viewpoint rather than from how you and I might be able to to comprehend or see it from our perspective. <clears throat> and this this is very much a deliberate task. You know, God, when he says renew, renew your mind, uh, you have to change your thinking patterns. Um, we all know we're ingrained um, uh, uh, with some of our patterns and some of us have became Christians very young. So it's been very helpful not to ingrain too many bad patterns. But some of them became Christians much later in their lives. That old man will still drag us down um, and wants us to think about uh, how we respond to our trials. Uh, and we tend to respond in many cases in, in the flesh, uh, in a worldly way, in a sinful way. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm not saying this in a sort of a deliberate sinful way. Um, it's just those patterns that's automatically ingrained how you respond. And a lot of times uh, we respond in, in a way by our feelings, our feelings driving our responses to how we respond to our troubles and concerns. However, we know, and that we've heard uh, timelessly again through our, our journey as Christians, and today it's been reaffirmed through communion again, is that we have been redeemed by the blood of uh, Christ. Um, <clears throat> we've been regenerated by his spirit. We now have a new heart, and that new heart is completely orientated towards God. So we're uh, we're actually being made able. Jesus says those chains have been broken. Those things that that holds us, that old man approach. Those chains, those things don't have a hold over us anymore. Um, <clears throat> but interestingly, wouldn't it have been nice uh, if, when that all happens, we we have this instant change, and and uh, we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to think that our patterns are just instantly changed. Uh, our way and our thoughts are instantly changed. And, and that's not how uh, the scriptures actually read out. And God says that process of renewing our mind is a process. It's a journey. Uh, there's ref a constant referral. We know about running the race. It's a, it's a gradual process as, as we sanctify it. So it's not going to just change overnight. Um, so in <clears throat> uh, no means am I saying here that uh, what James is saying is consider uh, uh, it joyful in our troubles uh, that we should be rejoicing in real pain and sorrow or sadness or even the injustices or the the misery we see around us in the world uh, or for that matter putting false uh senses of i'm happy and all is okay with me but deep inside it, it isn't okay with me uh, that that's not what jo uh, james means by this joy um james means something different he james knew very much knew that joy is far deeper than happiness. Now, happiness, as I've spoken to, I've alluded to this about a, 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 a few talks ago or a few, few moments ago, um, a while ago. Uh, happiness is based on our circumstances. And everybody experiences happiness. Uh, the, the world does, people who doesn't know God, uh, they experience happiness. Uh, but joy, uh, on the other side, uh, joy is based on God's promises. So happiness is based on our circumstances. Joy is based on God's promises. And that's what makes it possible to rejoice in trials and difficulties, even to the point of we have to endure pain for that sake. Um, 
Now, a very good example of that uh, to, to show us that uh, is in, in Acts 5 uh, and, and verse uh, 40 to 41. And uh, I'll just read that to you. He says, um, <clears throat> and this is uh, the apostles uh, before the Sanhedrin when they were brought before them. Um, and uh, they called the apostles in and they had them flogged. So in other words, they beat them and they, they had to uh, severe pain. So they called the apostles and they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and they let them go. So the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering a disgrace for the name, the name of Jesus. So they were rejoicing because that. The apostles saw something in the trial that we fail, uh, what we fail to see in the trial. Um, and we must see more in the trial than the trial itself. And that brings me to, to this point that I mentioned earlier, that uh, <clears throat> um, what, what does God see in our trials then? How does God see it? Uh, because the, uh, the apostles to be able to go through a flogging uh, and still rejoice, uh, well, how, how can you have a place or a position of being in that, in that place, going through such terrible things? Um, what God's seeing is, is he's, uh, he's, like we've heard, made a way. This is God's way to make you complete. This is uh, a process that God works in you. Um, God is actually inside that very trial. He's at work. Um, he's accomplishing all the purposes that he wants to accomplish uh, in that very trial. Now, something that uh, I certainly experienced as a, as, a, as a younger Christian, both in, in spiritual walk and uh, uh, as a younger man, is that um, I, I couldn't see God direct to, directly acting in my life, uh, having uh, taking action in my life. I saw it in, in the people around me. I saw it in um, the leaders of the church. I could see in other great Christians and other examples of men and women who were uh, like in the Bible of old, that the, the, you could see their lives being impacted by God, how he takes them through trials and they come out stronger and they've got these phenomenal testimonies. And I just felt, you know, it's God taking direct action in my life. I don't see it. Um, and I could ask you the same question. Is God taking direct action in your life? Can you actually see that? And you may say, as I did before, and sometimes I still do, um, uh, when, when I'm not always clear, is uh, I want to reassure you, he, he does. He's actually uh, um, doing that. And I want you to consider, using that word that James is using, consider, which is take a step back and think about it, is what is he up to in your life? Now, um, Jesus was a, a, um, a carpenter, and I, and I like to dabble in that myself a little bit. Um, and for me, the way I see it is, is, is Jesus fulfilling that role of a carpenter in our life. He's sort of chiseling away at us. He's filing the rough edges off, um, and uh, he's, he's sort of moving us towards that image of Christ. He's sanctifying us. Um, he's completing you and I. And he uses the tools of trials to do that very thing. Um, and that is the very evidence that God is at work in your life, um, <clears throat> making you into what he wants you to be, not what you want to be or how you perceive you want to be, but what he wants to be. So he's busy working away um, in that. So for us um, as Christians, as children of God, um, trials are not designed for suffering, are they not designed for punishment in our lives? Uh, the very purpose of trials and troubles in our lives um, are for refinement. How you handle the trials uh, is still a process that we need to go through. Um, and we therefore need to exchange our views uh, for how God views it. Now, we've sort of touched on how God views it, but how does he really view it? Well, interestingly, um, and we'll come to a text in Hebrews 12. It'll just be one verse that I'm going to read. Um, but it gives us a light into how God views our troubles and wants us to take the same approach. God is focused on the outcome. We tend to be focused when it comes to our troubles on the immediacy of relief, of getting out of uh, the, 
the troubles, the relief. And a lot of times our, our walk and relationship with him is based on that, especially at a, a, a younger, immature process where we've suddenly come to the Lord, and, but we still have many burdens and challenges upon us. Uh, and, and part of our relationship with God is based on that very thing. It's based on God, uh, uh, I don't want to have this pain. Why am I suffering? Can you relieve me of the language? Why have I got these troubles? Why have I got these poor relationships in my life? And so our focus is, is on relief of troubles and trials, where God's focus is, is on outcome. So let me go to Hebrews 12 uh, now, and I'm going to uh, read from, uh, or just read verse 2, actually. Um, so here the, 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 the writer actually uh, says, fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, which was Jesus, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So for the joy set before Jesus, he endured the cross. So Jesus considers the cross, just as James compels us to do, to consider the cross um, as joy uh, set before him. And, and that, that must be something uh, very difficult for us to always understand and comprehend. Despite all that anguish and suffering and absolute shame that Jesus needs to experience and knew what he was going to experience, um, he, his focus was not on how we see things, but how God sees. Remember, we see things on a sort of immediate relief of pain. God sees it in a perspective of outcome. His eyes were set on what that what was going to be accomplished by what he did, rather than on that uh, suffering and pain that he was going to go through. Uh, Jesus' greatest uh, um, accomplishment uh, was... To, to save us from our sins. Uh, and, and we took a communion this morning to remind us of, of that very thing that Jesus did. Uh, he, he faced the greatest burden that any man will ever face. He carried all our sins. Um, so Jesus was, could potentially easily be overwhelmed by that, but he was outcome focused um, in terms of how, what does God want out of this? How does God see this uh, trial for me? Um, so God is shaping you, uh, like I say, chiseling you and filing you and, and, and honing and polishing you through every single trial we experience. You know, God never commands us, uh, uh, us, his children, to do anything unless he equips us uh, with wisdom and with strength. And, uh, uh, and early on, I made the point that, um, that James is like a dentist. <laughs> Why would I say that? Why would I say James is like a dentist? Well, let me let me allude to something. Is uh, uh, say, imagine I've got this really bad tooth. It is, I mean, it is something out of this world. It's so sore. It's really bad. But I go to the dentist and uh, and I arrive at the dentist. And I say, oh, hello, dentist. Uh, you know, I've got this problem at my tooth, and 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 then we sit down and we have a chat about it. And then he said, well, actually, uh, let's have some lunch. And we have some lunch. And then we chatted and I said, oh, it's getting a bit late. I'll come back tomorrow and we'll sort this tooth out. Uh, fine. And I go off. And then I come back tomorrow. And we had another chat and we go for a walk. And then we chat. And, oh, it's time to run out again. We go. And then three days later, we're still chatting about this tooth. And say, oh, well, we better get to this tooth, won't we? Uh, that is probably a picture that nobody's ever heard of before, seen, or would even contemplate doing. Uh, you go to the dentist for one purpose only. You go there. Uh, it looks at, I want this thing that's in my mouth that is causing me so much, but I want it out. I want it out now. And, and that's, <laughs> that, that, that's why, to some degree, that, that is what James also does. James, uh, he gets to the nub of uh, the, the matter. He gets right in there. Um, he, he doesn't uh, uh, sugarcoat things um, because it needs immediate action. That tooth needs to come out now. And James is like that with the way he writes and presents uh, 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 God's uh, word to us. Um, and that's why I like about James. Good tonic, but sometimes very difficult tonic, especially when uh, when we have troubles. And that's why I, I draw on that at times of trouble and trials. Um, that's why um, it, it certainly lifts me up. So I'm going to ask the question. <clears throat> if all goes well, let's, uh, let's take a, a approach. I want all of you to think about the moment now. 
If you've got toothache out now, I want you to imagine you haven't got toothache. So that, that's what I want you to do now. So no toothache, everybody's perfectly fine, no reason to go to the dentist. I would like, um, I'm gonna look on the screen here and I'm gonna sort of go through the screen. I want to see hands up who likes going to the dentist. Remember everything's fine. So hands up, who likes to go to the dentist? Let me just see any hands. Um, well, no surprise there then. I've seen no hands go up. Nobody likes to go to the dentist. Right, now <clears throat> I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine you've got this awfully painful tooth. It is seriously painful. Um, it, you, you can't think straight with this tooth. I, I know Steve a few months ago had a, <laughs> an incident like this where that, that, that tooth was just beyond uh, uh, focusing sleepless nights. So now you're in the middle of the night, you think so, so tomorrow morning you can have an appointment. Who's looking forward to the dentist? Now put your hand up if you had a problem like that. So let's, let's take a, a quick look here. Uh, without fail, almost every single person, almost every single person have put their hand up. Interesting, isn't it? So what's changed? What changed here? Um, um, you do know that if you go to the dentist, he's gonna, he's gonna make you lie down and he's gonna ratchet your mouth open. You do know that, don't you? You put your hand up, you volunteer it. You do know he's gonna do that. He's gonna shove this bright light in your face and he's gonna stab you with needles, lots of sharp needles. And then he's gonna get the shrieking drill out and he's gonna sort of uh, wave it around and then he's gonna look at his assistant while the drill goes on and he's gonna talk about it, scaring you witless every time the drill goes off. And then he's gonna attack you with this drill. You put your hand up, you volunteered for this, didn't you? So this is what's gonna happen. Um, you know what? You actually welcome the pain he's gonna inflict upon you. Now, we aren't all sadists, and that's not the reason why you want this pain to be inflicted upon you. The reason is where before, when you didn't have a reason, there was no motivation to go to the dentist. Um, now there is, there, there's this real problem in your mouth and it's causing you a huge amount of distraction and harm. And you're now outcome focused, aren't you? You're focused on the result beyond the pain of what the dentist is gonna apply in your life. Uh, at that very moment, you're focused on him getting that tooth out. And folk, that is exactly what uh, sin is. It's that harmful destruction in our life. It's that harmful, painful tooth in your mouth. Um, and the dentist, although he's gonna inflict pain on you, is, uh, is the trials we must face in life. God views it that way. He sees the trial to, as an instrument to, to, to remove the sin, like a dentist, to remove that tooth. Uh, and the reason is, is he wants to move you closer to the image of Christ um, <clears throat> and to remove you uh, and to lead you closer and closer to him to have that relationship. Um, but sin separates us from God. And we know that. And Jesus came to remove that. So Jesus wants to say all those sinful teeth in your mouth, those things that harm and distract you. I want them out. And the way I'm going to extract them from you is through trials and difficulties and troubles. They will be painful. Um, but that's the way I'll do that. So. For us to see God's view in our trials um, is, is we do that through the process as we pray and move closer to God, as we study his word, we seek and ask him to have a godly perspective in our trials, not to say, God, relieve me of this pain. I, I don't want this pain. God says, yeah, yeah, but I can do that for you. I can do that for you. Let me just give you a little bit of pain and, and uh, the need will actually relieve some of the pain as I, I put the anesthetic in. And also, uh, I can actually pull the problem out. Um, so you have to go through that process. Uh, and God says, through prayer and studying and drawing nearer to God, you learn God's perspective of how those trials need to, remove, to be removed. So you could say now that, um, oh, sorry, I just lost my place here. Just bear with me, folks. Here we are. Um, so we could say through trials, <clears throat> um, if we don't prematurely cut them so short, they will produce some really positive stuff, really positive outcomes. Uh, and God uses these trials to accomplish his plans in our lives. Um, and one of these very good positive outcomes 
like the pain being removed of a tooth, is, uh, is endurance. Now, I spoke on, th on this about this about very briefly some months ago as well, and I mentioned about endurance. And endurance is a very concrete result in our lives. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and that comes from when we view trials uh, as a joy. Uh, and you may ask, well, how can that be concrete? Well, let me use uh, um, an example um, of other Christians, um, other people that have preceded us, centuries, over centuries of Christians um, faced some tremendous trials um, that uh, I, I would say I hope we don't face, but we may be called to face uh, to, to some degree or a lesser degree. Um, they faced a tremendous disgrace, uh, uh, loss, torture, uh, even death. Uh, we know this. They faced the lions. Uh, they faced the, the burning stakes. Um, Every imaginable thing you can imagine uh, uh, and, and hardship and pain Christians before us experienced. And how did they succeed to honor God? Through endurance. When it matters, you keep on honoring Christ. You don't cave in. Why? Because you've developed endurance that he's worked in your life. Um, now I'm going to say the words testing of your faith works endurance. I've mentioned it before and I'm saying other words again. Testing of your faith works endurance. Sounds familiar? Well, actually that is uh, back to James. If you're still in James, uh, if we go back to the book of James 1, um, I read verse 2 and I've elaborated on that. This is verse 3 and 4. And verse 3 and 4 says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. So our process, our trials uh, considered in a joyful way will produce endurance in, in us. It will mature us. It will complete us. And we won't lack in anything. Wow, isn't that something uh, amazing? Well, unfortunately, um, as, uh, as black and white as it says there, that is the, the route to maturity or part of the route to maturity, this process of endurance. Uh, many Christians, uh, unfortunately, don't. They cave in or crumble. They they give up on, on their marriages. They give up on their family or friends, um, give up on the church, um, give up on their own testimony. Uh, and sadly, many of them give up on God. They've not allowed themselves to grow in those trials so that uh, they can handle the trials in God's way. They still handle it in their own way. They're seeing it from their perspective, uh, from immediate relief, not on the outcome. Um, and God holds us responsible uh, for this very endurance. Um, how can I say that? Well, there's a very famous Christian verse that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. If you're not, uh, as soon as you come across it, it becomes part of uh, most Christians uh, knowing of the Bible. It's a, it's a very one of those things that is, is certainly a. Uh, um, uh, uh, an arrow in your quiver as a Christian. And it's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. And it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide you a way out so that you can endure it. So He's faithful and He will provide. Um, God is preparing you uh, for the days to come. Today is a preparation. Um, he's training you in endurance uh, to, to a point of completeness, to become a highly effective instrument in his hands if you allow him to be. Uh, now, we all know with, um, with athletes, uh, they, they train many, many hours to compete in one little event. Uh, and when I say little, it's normally a short event compared to all the training they've put in. Why is that? Um, I can remember years ago, my military cons conscription days, um, it, we used to have a saying, uh, uh, say, train hard, fight easy. Why, why would we say that? Why would we do all of that in, in, enormous amount of preparation and training? Well, we do that in a less dramatic trial or challenge so that we can actually build up an endurance. So when the actual test or requirement comes to where we have to compete, uh, where the battle comes and you have to stand, you have built endurance, you know what you're capable, you know the skills that's built and you know your limits uh, uh, and that endurance helps you to get through what you're going to face. Um, and 
So great contests or competitions are only won because it's preceded by smaller, less significant contests that's been won before it. I'm going to say that again. Great, the greatest contests or competitions are only won because it is preceded by smaller, less significant contests that has been won. Just imagine, um, I've just started uh, running marathons about a month ago. Uh, <clears throat> yes, don't laugh, I'm a marathon runner now. Um, so here I go, and uh, I've signed up for the Olympic Games in Japan in a few months' time, and I'm going to win the gold medal, and, I'm, and, and it's assured to win the gold medal. I am assured to win it. We all know that, that <laughs> that's a complete naive position to take. A person who's run marathons for a month, there is no way that they're going to be competing in the Olympic Games uh, in a month's time, uh, a novice runner, and, and win the Olympic Games. And we've got a very good example of, of this very thing. In the Bible, in Genesis 15, we read about the story of Joseph um, and any smaller trials. We think about the time he was um, thrown in the pit, um, <clears throat> sold into slavery, served as a slave, and then he went to jail. And it wasn't jail. We read those words very quickly, but jail, it was a long term. I think it was seven years that he was in jail for. Um, it was a long time. Uh, and, and for him, every time, I mean, imagine you've been thrown in a pit, that, that alone for, for the average person, for us, being uh, uh, th uh, thrown in a pit by our, by our own loved family members, uh, you would see that as an, an, one of your biggest trials in life. And then to be sold into slavery, you would see that as an enormous thing. Now, he's been facing these mega, mega, mega trials in his life, but they were actually small trials step-by-step step, small tiles as God was preparing him for a very, very significant task to put him second in command uh, of Egypt. Uh, and he ended up saving many and many, many lives, thousands of lives. Um, but imagine, imagine he stepped out of that trial. He didn't follow through. He wouldn't have built up the endurance, the, 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 the skills, the wisdom, what God needed to impart on them to when it came to do what needed to be done at that very significant level, he was ready and prepared. So it's a very important uh, element of, of facing trials in joy because it's a, it's a part of the refinement process, you know, as part of the preparation process. Now, I would be amiss if I didn't say you there is a warning, there is a danger here that every trial has a trap. And we've all experienced this trap and we have either give into it or not, and that is the temptation to cut the trial short, to cut the trouble short, to step away from it. And, and we're almost instinctively doing that. Uh, we, we just don't, we, we don't feel comfortable to endure discomfort or, or pain, um, or, or uh, we just want to get out of it as quick as we can. We, we just want to call it a short season in our life and move on. Um, and a lot of times the driver for that, as I've sort of alluded on earlier on, is, is it comes from feelings and how we feel emotionally. We just feel super uncomfortable and we just don't want to experience that. And so we, want, we have that temptation and that's a big trap in terms of your process of building endurance and, and, um, uh, and considering um, your troubles in a joyful way. Uh, if you're going to cut it short, let's think about that. So I would say if God cuts it short, that's fine. That's a blessing and that's great. If you cut it short under God's instruction, however that happens and God instructs you, uh, I would say that's fine as well. That's great. However, I'm going to make the point here. If you cut it uh, uh, short and you don't go through that trial uh, and you cut it short in an unbiblical way, you will lack the spiritual endurance that the very trial was designed to produce in you. Let me just say that again. If you cut it short, that trial or difficulty you're going through in an unbiblical way, you will lack the spiritual endurance that the very fruit, uh, that the trial was designed to produce in you, the, the very trial. Um, when it matters, you're going to be lacking endurance. That's very important. Trials equip us for future trials. Um, and God doesn't want us not to be equipped. And we read earlier in, in 1 Corinthians 10 as well that he promises he will take us through. He will equip us. He will give us wisdom. So it's about being equipped. Um, and in, endurance uh, gives us that. And endurance allows us to prevail at the times um, when, uh, when we are facing uh, uh, troubles and difficulties. 
<clears throat> so the conclusion dawns on me, and it is clear, in my opinion, at least in my mind, that uh, when trials come, uh, and, and if you stepped out, uh, you're not going to learn the spiritual uh, lessons or the endurance uh, or the wisdom that God wanted to impart on uh, to you for that trial. And the way I see it is that um, yesterday's trials uh, was part of God's process to equip me and prepare me for today's trials. And today's trials, as I'm now equipped because of yesterday's trials and overcoming that, um, now equips me for tomorrow's trials. So in, a, in, a, in, in some degree, when we look at uh, 1 Corinthians 10, we're saying that uh, God will give us a way out of that temptation to give us that endurance. He's already started the work yesterday um, because my training was already started yesterday, the day before, the day before. So there's not going to be a miraculous uh, equipping, sunny appearing. It's actually been built into me in time. God uses the trials and experiences I have uh, to build that up. So he's equipping you now for tomorrow's trials. Um, <clears throat> and if I quit on a trial or I step out in an unbiblical way and I don't allow to see, uh, see it in God's way, uh, then I'm not going to learn the spiritual lessons that God wanted me to learn. Uh, he promises you, you will be equipped. Uh, so logic says to me then, if you didn't learn this lesson now in this trial, that significant next thing that God has for you, which will in, probably entail difficulties and trials, logic says to me is that God won't progress you onto that because he promises he's going to equip you and he's going to provide for you uh, in a time of trial. So it means, in my view of this, is that you will be repeating that same trial in some form or another, not identically the same way, but you'll repeat that same trial until you've learned the lesson, until you've equipped to get to that next significant task that God has for you. Uh, and so you will proceed once you're equipped or in, uh, in, a, in, in, a, in an advanced phase of equipping before he puts you into the next task uh, that he wants you uh, to achieve in your life. So trials of today form part of that equipping for tomorrow. Um, and there is no better example. And we all know this. We, re we learn this from Sunday school uh, lessons. Uh, we learn about Jonah. Um, <clears throat> And isn't that a good example of exactly that? He said, no, 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 I'm not following God's will. I'm not doing this. Um, uh, I'm, I, I'm not going to do this. Uh, I'm going to stop from what needs to be done. I'm going to do my thing, get on the boat and, and try and outrun God here. Um, but he didn't learn the lesson that that is not how God works. You've got to trust in him. And in, in that context, uh, God says, OK, well, I'll take you through a, a second, a similar trial. Uh, but this time the trial life might be a little bit hard and difficult and you may suffer a little bit more longer. I, I'm going to let a big fish swallow you up. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, you and I don't want to be in that position of stepping out from that trial. God wants to equip us for the next one. We don't want to step out of this trial and then step into the mouth of a, of a, of a whale, as it were, uh, where that trial becomes even more difficult or more challenging for us because God is wanting us to focus our minds. And there's a lesson to be learned here. So we're seeing it from our perspective. Uh, we want immediate relief, uh, but God doesn't see it that way. Uh, so the short of it is, is there is no shortcuts. That's the short of it. Uh, God loves you so, so much that uh, he will teach you his ways. Even, even if you decide on a very costly, painful, unnecessary detour, God will teach us uh, his ways. Um, so I'm going to encourage you today. Don't give up. Don't give up in this time of trials uh, and troubles. Um, we face more of that in this day and age now where we live, uh, uh, the onslaught on our Christian faith. Uh, and, and these things are compounded by the, the time we live in now, COVID-19. So I'm, I'm encouraging you, don't give up because God certainly doesn't give up on you. He promises you, he'll take you through every single trial. He's your loving father. He, he's only got good uh, for you in mind. If you give up, you're settling for less than what God planned for you. And this process of endurance um, is a wonderful thing. It changes you. Uh, endurance strengthens you. Endurance equips you. But the one thing that endurance doesn't do is it doesn't change your situation. And all of this culminates into a very important thing. It's pulling that tooth out, that tooth called sin in your life. 
so that you can move closer and closer and more intimately closer to to him uh, and and so you and I, we need, we need God's discipline in our lives. We need that uh, discipline of trials to become complete and what he intended for each and every one of us. Um, James saw that in the trials. Um, he saw that it brings strength, that it brings spiritual strength. So our bodies might not be strong, but that could be actually one of our trials is that our, our body fails us. Um, and, but the key here is not feel the joy, but to consider it uh, a joy in every trial. So always align your thoughts to God's ways and to God's will. Um, become outcome focused. What I mean by that is align, uh, uh, align and renew your mind uh, to, uh, and, and not your uh, and not be feeling focused, but with your mind focused on the things of God. Renewing your mind, learning God's ways to approach your troubles and trials. And the interesting thing is, early on, as we live from a worldly person. We respond uh, many times in emotions and feelings uh, in a godly way. If we do God's way and we consider it and renew our minds, the feelings will follow and therefore we can be joyful in times of trouble. Um, so I'm going to finish with this last uh, um, verse. Uh, and um, it's a verse that, I, that, I, uh, uh, that always reminds me and, and really focuses my mind when, when things don't go too well. Um, remember, it is God's will that we must face trials. It's your responsibility, obviously with God and the help of the Holy Spirit, to change that perspective and not face it with feelings and the old man, but to face it um, in a godly way. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you and Jesus Christ. And I'm emphasizing verse 16, rejoice always, even at the times of trouble. So I hope James, the dentist, if I may call him that, um, has been insightful uh, to you as he has been for me and still encourages me. And I, and, uh, and I encourage you to uh, um, be joyful. Consider being joyful in, in your troubles and trials you face. Uh, yes, indeed, Lord. We, we just come before you, Lord. We know, Lord, that um, um, that your grace and mercy abounds, Lord. You, you say that to us. You promise us, Lord. And, and Lord, we know that even through the, the trials and difficulties we face, we've just heard earlier, Lord, for so many people who are facing both physical uh, difficulties, Lord, um, but we all face so many trials and difficulties, Lord, uh, that we know uh, that you've made a way, Lord, where there is no way. And through Jesus, Lord, we know we can turn to you, Lord, uh, and, and receive that strength uh, and that wisdom and to be equipped, Lord, for whatever mm. you, you uh, have for us in store, Lord. Lord, we uh, want to be uh, at your feet, Lord, uh, hearing from you, learning from you as, as a child from, from their yeah. father, Lord. Uh, Lord, we want to soak up all these things we hear and le learn from you, Lord, because it just draws us nearer and nearer to you, Lord. So, Lord, I pray that uh, as we finish off our service, Lord, and the things we've heard and the praises we've given and the prayers we've prayed, Lord, that it all culminates, Lord, uh, uh, in our hearts, Lord, to, to, uh, to be quickened by the Holy Spirit, Lord, to be filled um, by you, Lord, to mm. be focused only on you, Lord. It's about mm. you, Lord Jesus, so that, yeah. uh, that our lives um, will get rid of those things, Lord, that distract us, almost like that painful tooth. The distractions, yeah. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you help us, Lord, to focus, to focus on you, Lord. Give us the strength this coming week. Uh, Lord, for all our brothers and sisters here, now on, Lord, and also those who are listening through the DVDs and afterwards, Lord, uh, to, to strengthen and equip us, Lord, um, so that we can be a great testament for you, Lord, that we, mm. our lives may honour you, Lord, when the moment comes, Lord, that we are ready to serve. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.